G'day Bifrosters, today we're going to have a crack at this. This is from Jonah's video in exploring what's possible with Bifrost. Uh, I asked if anybody wanted me to make a tutorial so this was the first thing that came back. I've taken a look at how Jonah's done it and mine is a lot simpler but does achieve the same effect. Let's get over to Maya. So this is my version. My tree is a lot simpler. I'm just using colors to show the result. So let's just hide this and we'll make this again from scratch. First thing, we'll bring in the things we're going to be working with. Put them. So there's the needles and there's the branches. We'll just leave the branches out for now. Then I'm going to make a point and normal array from this geometry. So I've got my own node for doing that, which apparently I can't spell today. And all that's doing is point position, point normal, spitting it out. This just makes it faster. The first thing I'm going to make is a color array. So to do that, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to get the array size, and then I'm going to throw down a resize array. Plug, uh, plug the array size there into the resize array, and I'm going to add a value. And this is going to be my base color value for the tree. So this is quite simple, usual story. Oops, no very dark green and all the alpha in the world and then I'll come over here and set geo property like so plug this in and it won't work because for some reason Bifrost especially today has not wanted to do this for me it could be also be because I forgot to type color in there let's go there we go I can get rid of that now so this is just taking the number of points, turning them into, an, into a new array, which is going to become my color array. And I do it this way because I'm going to set things in that array later on. Now I need another one of these. What this is going to be for is the normal array that we cast arrays with. So instead of a color for four, I'm, I'm vector four. Instead of a matrix four, I'm going to use a matrix three. And my normal value is just going to be pointing straight up, so 0, 1, 0. Moving from there, let's get some raycasting going. Now, I'm going to be raycasting from this object to this object. So it's going to be both source and target for the raycast. So to do that, I'm going to take the positions. That's, that's where the rays are going to start from. And then this is my normal array down here. I'm going to put this into the directions. So at this point in time, Let's just move this across. This is shooting rays straight up. And what I want to look for is the rays that miss the rest of the, the rest of the tree. So if, say for example here, and a ray just shoots straight up, it's not going to hit the tree. So I'm going to sample those positions. Ah, sample the property, like that. And plug in the same geometry over here, or not over here. My positions, so where the rays, oops, sorry, my locations are going to come in here. And I'm going to be sampling point position. So I need to put a default value in there, which is, in this case, uh, 3. A math float 3 a vector. All good, I've got my sample property done. What I want to do now, instead of using the actual sample data, that's just going to give me the point positions. I'm not changing the point positions. I don't need to use this. And this is what worked. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find all an array. What I'm going to find is every ray that's not hitting something else, like this. So I'll leave that blank. So what that's looking for is everything that failed, and that's what I want. From that point in time, let's, we'll grab our color array coming in here. We'll change this. We'll do a set in array, and we will set the vertices that missed. And what we'll do is I'll just grab a version of this, and I'll change this to straight white. Plug that in there, and nothing happens. Nothing happens because we need to do some setup. First thing I was doing is I turned off the cutoff distance, because that seemed to work better. And the thing that makes it really work is putting in a minimum distance here. So there you go, bang. Now you can see that any rays that miss are gonna generate a white point on the object. Now, yeah, it's green, yeah, it's white, yeah, it's tree, yeah, it's snow, but I'm not using it like that. This is not 
ex expected to be a texture. This is a set of data that is that is showing me. So for the next tutorial where I'll be putting them into a row and affecting them, I'll be actually setting these as properties on our geometry. So I'll do a snow color and a base color and then I'll, I'll linear interpolate a loop between them. But that's for the next one. For now, the, the real takeaway from this is that I could not get this to work until min distance was in. If I set that to zero, it just sits there and does nothing. I, I guess there's a reason for that. You can turn cutoff distance on um, as long as it's a re reasonably big number. If it's not, you're going to get some errors there. So there. So just to recap really quickly, and then I'll let you go. Here's our needles coming in. This is getting our positions and normals, and those are just to get the size of those arrays. And yes, I could be a little more um, efficient here and use the same array size for both, and it wouldn't make a difference. I could also, if I wanted to, use the normals for the array size because number of points and number of normals are equal. Once I've done that, I use the first array, I plug a color into it to get the base color of the tree, and that becomes my color array. I, I tend to do that a lot because I like a visual feedback on what I'm working on. From there, when I've got my color array, I generate a an array of vectors pointing straight up and through everything into a raycast. So I'm raycasting from this geometry, from these positions, in this direction. In the raycast, I've got cutoff distance set to quite a big number and then I have a minimum distance. This is very important. And the minimum distance will change the effect slightly, apparently. But not so slightly if you make it really, really small. So from there, I get I sample the property at those locations and I get everything that misses, which is this guy here. If I turn, if I turn that on, you can see that it inverts. It's all the same data, I could have just done it with an invert as well, but this is a little bit prettier. I take the indices from that array, so all of the misses, plug them into the color array, which is coming from here, and change them all to white. And that's it, we're done. So in the next tree one, I will go through how this I set this up for Arnold, and I can then use some settings to loop between snowy and not so snowy, just like Jonah did. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.